we need to talk about the Chappelle show, right? Okay. Um, so, all right. So you were dealing with the, the sketches from a director's standpoint. That was your assistance, right? Yeah. I mean, I would, uh, <laughs> on some of the sketches, you know, I would give ideas and kind of, you know, throw stuff out to, to, to Dave and see if it worked. Um, like the, the mad real world sketch. There's a, I don't know if you remember that, but there's a scene <laughs> oh, in there. Oh, okay. That's one of the funniest ones too, but oh, yeah. I always those, start those, with this blind white supremacist fight. Okay. This is like yep. the classic one everybody loves. So, all right, you get the call to do the show, right? And f from what I understand, this is the first sketch that you work on? Yeah, that was one of the first ones that they gave me. And, uh, you know, I loved it because it, it dealt with all the stuff that I like. Um, you know, social issues, racial issues, black, white, all of that. That's my thing. So um, I, 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 I thought the sketch was, was brilliant. You know, I, I brought whatever I brought to it. Um, but I loved that sketch. And, and, you know, Dave obviously really liked the sketch. Um, I remember uh, that, you know, after we, we did it, uh, Comedy Central was like, oh, Dave, you, you can't put this in the first episode. It's too crazy. It's got to be in like the second or third. Let people get used to you. And, and Dave, who has never been afraid <laughs> to speak his mind, said, if it's not in the first uh, episode, I quit. The show hadn't even aired yet. He didn't even got all the money in his pocket from the first season yet. And he's ready to walk away from this thing. And so uh, it ultimately ended up being in the first show. And it create it, it would have been a good show anyhow if it hadn't been in, because there were good sketches. But it created the buzz. It's like after you saw that, you're like, this could go anywhere. There's no telling what this fool might do. He's just, it's just so out. What was the, I never heard anyone that worked on a show talk. What was the creative process like with that show? Um, a lot of it. So Dave would write with his uh, uh, writing partner, Neil Brennan. And they would come up with, they would come up with the sketches. Uh, sometimes people would give them ideas and they, they would, you know, play with it. They would come up with the sketches and they would send the sketches to the director. Um, for the most part, it was me and one other guy. Neil did some of the last season. But um, they would send, you know, I'd get a, a, like maybe six or seven sketches that they're like, okay, this is what we're going to do in this block. And I would, I've, I've lived out here. I'd fly back to New York. Um, we would, you know, I'd get the sketches. I'd scout locations. I would, you know, if I had any ideas of anything that might, you know, make something funny or... or make something work, you know, visually in a certain way. I'd throw them out to Dave. And then, um, and then you know, we would, we would sit down and have a table read. Uh, we would cast it. Uh, and so that was the first time I met Charlie Murphy and Donnell Rawlings and, you know, all these people when you cast these things. And, uh, you know, this is before Charlie became Charlie. And he was always a cool dude, uh, Charlie. Um, but he was living in Eddie's shadow. And, yeah, you know, and there was, you got that older brother like that, man. I yeah, see man, his, his older rough. brother was, rough, you know. And I remember one day driving home from the set with Charlie. I was in his, uh, whatever, car. he had some nice car. We, and anyhow, we were driving back. <laughs> he, was, he was just giving me all kind of crazy stories and advice because Charlie had already lived a life. He was telling me what to do if I ever went to jail, <laughs> all kind of shit like this. And uh, I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm going there, but all right, I'll, I'll, I'll bank it, I'll bank it. And he was like, yeah, man, you know, people don't know when Eddie was in school, you know, the only reason he did it, he didn't get his butt kicked on the regular is because everybody knew he was Charlie Murphy's little brother because he would go to school carrying a briefcase and wearing an ascot. <laughs> I was like, so he told me all kind of crazy tales. Um, and in fact, he told me at lunch one day the Prince story and the Rick James story. And that's how it ended up getting into the show, because I told Dave, I was like, Charlie just told me this incredible story about Prince and Rick James. And Dave heard, he's like, I'm putting that shit in the show. <laughs> Bam, it was in. 
Um, so the, no, the question I have is, how much of the story did not get in the show? I, I, it, what you see in that show is verbatim what Charlie told me at lunch. He, we were just sitting at lunch. I think we were doing a player, uh, what was it, Time Haters, where they would all dress like pimps and, you know, and go around. And, and we were just at lunch. And Charlie just, he was like, let me tell you about the time I went up to Prince's house to play basketball. I was like, okay. <laughs> let me tell you about the time that Rick James. And I was like, okay. He said he had a bad cocaine problem. <laughs> <laughs> so he how did, how did Charlie Murphy even end up on the show? He ended up on the show. The first one was, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, um, Mad Real World. So he was cast in a Mad Real World. And uh, that was an interest. I think that was, I'm pretty sure that was the first one. I'm pretty sure that was the first one. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that was the first one. And that I, 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 unless it was... Nah, it had to be the mad real world. Um, but anyhow, Charlie, <laughs> Charlie and, uh, was it Charlie and Donnell? Uh, I'm trying to remember because there was a scene where, you know, uh, the, white, the white dude that came to live in the house with all the black people, because it was just flipping the script on the real world where yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah there was, was always, always one black, the black person, person they always made him look blame, nuts. Yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> They're like, okay, it was going to be all black people and one white dude's going to show up. But then when he showed up with his girlfriend, they, they had this kind of beat in there that, you know, they were kind of like looking at his girl. And I remember that that's like one of the things I had. I was like, oh, we can, we can make more of that. So it was like, it went from them looking at the girl to her like being down with it and getting in bed with him while they were doing her. And he's like watching this looking all sad. It was just, it got really crazy. But Charlie, Charlie came in and, uh, he, you know, he was, he was just Charlie. Charlie is just Charlie or was just Charlie. He, that's, I was so sad that he's gone, but he was just a cool dude. All right. And um, I wanted to ask you too with Dave Chappelle, right? Um, do you think he's more brilliant writing the sketches or with the filming or as a stand-up comedian? He's, he's, just, brilliant in he's, just, he's just brilliant. He's a really smart guy. Um, Self-learned, I guess, a lot because I don't think he went to college, but he reads a lot. I remember he told me a story about being at a party with a bunch of super intelligent black folk and white folk. <laughs> he said that... Uh, uh, I'll mess it up because I'm not as smart as Dave, but he said that, you know, they, somebody was doing a quote and they quoted, they quoted uh, a poem. I can't remember the poem, but at the end of the, the person said this, uh, I think it was uh, Maya, Maya Angelou. She made this quote. She said, blah, 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 blah. You know, kind of that Maya Angelou voice. Yeah, yeah. Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> and then she said, Langston Hughes, such and such and so and so. And Dave said to me, he's like, and she said, the one poem I know. And I'm like, no, nah, I doubt that. He said, but I knew it wasn't Langston Hughes. So I said, excuse me, that wasn't Langston Hughes. It was, the poem was X, Y, and Z, and it was County Cullen. And he said, everybody would sigh. And he said, that's right. I corrected America's poet. <laughs> so Dave is just a smart dude. Do not be fooled by any shenanigans or anything like that. The guy's brilliant. And uh, he, he knows how to, he knows how to frame things. I wish he would go back and do some more sketch stuff, but I love all the stand up. He's just a brilliant man. And what was that like for, uh, obviously he said his part, but what was that like for, no one talks about the people that were working on the show, what that was like when everything stopped. For a lot of people, it was uh, depressing. Because, yeah, <laughs> you know, they're abrupt, making right, money. Bro, it's just like, it's, it's riding high, it's the best thing ever, and it's just so Yeah, no, for a lot of people, it was, it was very depressing. Um, I, I, don't, I wouldn't say I was depressed. I was obviously, I think, a bit disappointed, but at the same time, I was like, you know, if 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 it's if it's messing with Dave so much that he needs to walk away from it, then he needs to walk away from it. 
What was the issue? They wanted him to do more extreme stuff, or he just didn't want to do it anymore. What was the story? He, I think he had an. He he just. This is what I think it was. You'd have to ask Dave. Um, the first season. I remember talking to him, and he would be like, you know. His attitude was, "I'm sticking it to the man." Yeah. I'm saying, you know, because they didn't want the blind supremacy set to go on. Second season, we did the Nigar family, if you remember that one. And <laughs> that was crazy. That news was wild. Yeah, they did not want that to go on. And he forced all this stuff to go on. So he was like, I am forcing them to, 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 to I'm forcing my voice on these people that don't want it. Yeah. But then the third season, where they're offering him, 50 million or whatever, he, I think he felt like, wait a second, am I really, am I really tweaking them that much if they want yeah, yeah, giving me 50 yeah, million? They're, more, they're yeah, like, yeah. attaboy, keep it up. So yeah. he started to question the value, I think, of, this is my opinion, of what, he, of what he was doing and how it was being perceived. And I think that was the big problem. So. You know, if uh, he's a he's an artist, man, so you, you got to just kind of respect his process and what he needed to do. He needed to step away.